So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Uh, happy Friday. Happy pre-open practice day uh, for those of y'all that are going. Uh, I love y'all and I hope y'all have a really, really great day today. Uh, anyway, just to get straight into it. This was the uh, presser from today, which I, I don't think was available on YouTube. Um, I saw it on the Ravens app um, and I don't even think they put it on Facebook. But anyway. Uh, so sorry to those of y'all that didn't see it, uh, but that's the reason why. If you didn't see it, that's probably why. Uh, but anyway, it started off with Wink, and I had to take notes. So if you see me looking down at the phone, that's why. Uh, but it started off with Wink. He sounded like extremely confident in his guys and it wasn't a cocky confidence it wasn't an arrogant confidence it wasn't one of those overhyped confidence where you're like oh yeah this guy's doing great this guy's doing great this guy it wasn't anything like that um it was sort of, sort of like a uh, just a smooth confidence where it's like yeah we got it we straight we got it we ain't got nothing to worry about it, it reminded me of that um, and he said that he's very excited for the open practice tomorrow uh, because of the crowd noise. He said it'll help the guys uh, with their communication. So y'all that are going tomorrow, be loud. And I know you will because everybody going to be super excited to be there. Uh, so that should be fun. Um, he talked about how he's just he's ready for the pass to come on. It sounds like Wing really ready for the season to start. I mean, like a lot of other players are and coaches and whatnot. But Wing just sounded ready, man. He sounded ready like, yeah, practice is cool, but I'm ready to get to it, man. Um, so shout out to him. Uh, he talked about Adafe away uh, and about his speed. And, and that's something that when I mention Adafe away and when I watch film on him, I saw that he does have the, uh, the track, um, not the track speed. He does have the, uh, the 40 times speed. He got the 40 speed, but he also has the football speed, too. Um, but he said that uh, of Adafe away, speed kills. Um, he said that he made a play where it, I guess it was a running play because he said he got to the quarterback and then he still made a play on the running back as well on the pitch. So Adafi was everywhere. So hopefully that's what we see uh, on Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays and last year's case on Wednesdays. Probably not this year because anyway. You get the point. He said with uh, Nigel Warrior, uh, they'll try him at cornerback, uh, see what he's got there. And you know with Ravens, they try everybody everywhere. So it's with them, especially on defense, the more you can do. The more you can do. Um, and he, it just, it sounded like Wink, he just loves his job, man. Like when I listen to this guy talk, it, it just really sounded like he loves what he does. And he just has a lot of fun uh, as a coach, too. Um, he said the, the fun part about coaching is just seeing where guys are at, seeing where they're at, uh, where their head's at, where their game is at, um, just what kind of level they're playing on. He just said that that's his favorite part about it. That's the fun part about it. Um, he talked about Calais Campbell because that's been a uh, subject of conversation recently with Calais Campbell uh, since he's eight sacks away from getting 100 sacks. So you, you got to feel like we're wink. Like, come on now. With Wink, you got to feel like he is literally going to do everything that they can possibly do to get Calais Campbell to 100 sacks. You got to feel like it, man. Um, so, and he said the sooner that Calais gets there, the better. Because obviously, if he's getting eight sacks, then uh, uh, that's pretty good. That means he's bringing down quarterbacks like they're finishing the plays on defense sack wise. So, that would be nice. Uh, he talked about Marcus Peters because there was a, uh, a, a clip going around today from Mar Marcus Peters giving a young fan his cleats. His cleats that he just used in practice. Um, so that shout out to the kid and shout out to Marcus Peters for doing that. He talked about how uh, a lot of people misunderstand Marcus Peters because they are obviously known for being super edgy on the field. Uh, but he said off the field, he got a great heart, man. And I, I loved it, man. So shout out to Marcus Peters for even doing that for that fan because that's those are those moments, man. Those are those moments like when you actually interact like you, you could say hi to kids and whatnot. Oh, hi. You could talk to them, whatnot. But when you actually have an interaction with them, a direct interaction, it makes a big difference. Shout out to Lamar Jackson playing football with them on the basketball court. Anyway, next up was Greg Roman uh, and Greg Roman. Um, shout out to Greg Roman because Greg Roman has been um, he's been a big topic of discussion. Uh, this offseason and with Greg Roman I know I, I do believe he is on somewhat of a hot seat I don't think he's on the hottest of hot seats but again his, his cheeks are beginning to form a bit of sweat around them um, so I do think the pressure is on best case scenario in my opinion because I know, I know a lot of people thrown out a lot of scenarios 
I hope Greg Roman doesn't get fired. The reason I say that is because if he doesn't get fired, then that means the offense is doing a really, really good job. Stuff is clicking. They're getting different guys involved, and that will mean the Ravens are well on their way to having success offense-wise. So I hope he doesn't get fired, and I do hope that they take leaps and bounds forward this year. But Greg Roman did talk about some of the possible reasons why they didn't necessarily do that last year. Um, and what he said, uh, he said training camp is where they need to create their identity on offense <laughs> have we heard that one before i don't know but no but yeah he said training camp that, but, but it's true last year uh they didn't have a training camp it, it wasn't a normal training camp so and of course we know later on in the season he said they got to forge a new idea anyway moving on he said um if you were I, I did love this part he said if you were good at something the previous year you cannot assume that you'll be good at it again and i love that i love that because that allows you or it makes you remain humble in your approach it makes you remain humble in your uh game and what you have to do it makes you still have to work because well, you could all you could assume that oh yeah ravens they they were great at running last year they were great at running the previous year they'll be great at running again and i mean i, I think we, we do expect that but at the same time i love how he brought that up you you cannot assume that you're still going to be good at it just because of last year and it's something that keith williams mentioned that Last year is last year. And we're going to talk about that when we talk about Keith Williams in a bit. But back to Greg Roman. Uh, he said he's glad that they have the time this year to work on things as opposed to last season. Because obviously last season, with no training camp, they couldn't implement everything like they wanted to. Uh, and like we wanted them to as well. Uh, he said with Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley, they've been taking full advantage of Lamar missing. Uh, which, I mean, they got no choice but to do. Um, and he said that uh, guys would like dream about having these reps Backup quarterbacks, they would dream about this um, It's obviously not the ideal situation for Lamar, for Greg Roman, for the Ravens offense, for the other quarterbacks But they got to take advantage, it's next man up right now uh, He said they are still communicating with Lamar Jackson uh, so that's, And that's expected even though he's not there, it's not like, oh, they cut off all communication with him. No, that, that would be silly. Uh, he also talked about how they want the, to get the running backs more involved in the passing game. And that's something that J.K. Dobbins talked about earlier uh, this offseason around like OTA time. He said he wants to be more involved in the passing game. And that's expected. That's definitely expected. Uh, he said with Sammy Watkins, he's a gym. Said he's a great player, uh, a great player on and off the field. Uh, and he considers him one of the best wide receivers in the league. So high praise for Sammy Watkins. He talked about their relationship and that um, he said that it sort of just came full circle because they he said they met uh, Sammy's second year um, and they obviously had some success. But um, he, he just talked about how he had been through some things. Sammy had been through some things. They had both been through a lot, but now they're getting to work together again. And it's a beautiful thing. So uh, we hope that relationship is just as strong on the field that it is off. Uh, he talked about T. Martin and Keith Williams. He said they are, and this is something that we've been hearing, not just from Ravens media, uh, not just from Ravens players, but from fans. I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen people that have went to the training camp. Uh, they talked about this, too. He said that T and Keith are extremely detailed and heavy on fundamentals. So the, extreme, the extremely detailed, we've been hearing that so much, so much. Um, and I, I love it. I love it. That's what they got to be. Uh, he said they should have a big impact. And they should, and again, what we said from as soon as they got hired, it's up to Greg Roman, it's up to John Harbaugh to determine the level of impact that they have. It's up to them to allow them to have a voice. They got the resume. They got the resume, they got the background. Now they just got to get the job. You got to allow them to do the job. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we'll. Um, now, this was my favorite, 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 favorite part of this entire uh, presser favorite part from greg roman and then, yeah yeah favorite part from the entire presser he said and i really hope this is the case please let it be greg we'll love you i'll love you i'll i'll send you a nice gift as I, I i will love you forever greg please please anyway he said if players do things well then the ravens will find a way to use their skill set if players do things well then we'll find a way to use their skill set that is so important and it's just what's been missing with the Ravens. It's what's been missing on offense. If players do something well, let them do that. And that's just what, what we have not been seeing enough of with the Ravens offense. 
with Hollywood. He is not just a goal receiver. You don't just have to say, oh, all right, Hollywood, go. He, you don't just have to send him on the deep ball. He can run all the routes. He's shown it. And again, playoff time, they certainly show it. They do so many different things with Hollywood in the playoffs. But regular season, is they, they, they make it so basic. And it could be one of them things like, hey, maybe we're, we're saving, saving, saving playoff Hollywood for the playoffs. We don't want to use him like that regular season because maybe somebody will pick. Nope, I don't. Do a regular season. And then uh, with Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay. Jet sweep king. Let's have to have him on some screens. We can give him some deep passes too. Have him on some slant. We can just just incorporate these guys more. And we ain't got to go through every single player. But you get what I'm saying. James Prochet. He like 5'10", 5'11". He's around my height. But he with the 50-50 ball, that dude's something serious. So, I mean, I, I could jump a little bit too now. But I, I don't think I could James Prochet jump. But the point, use guys for for what they're good at. Put them in situations to where they can succeed, where they have the most opportunity and biggest opportunity for success. So hopefully Greg Roman does follow through with this because it could just make the Ravens' offense great. It's already a really good offense, but it could be even better. Uh, they talked about Josh Oliver. He said he's doing really good, uh, and he said they are throwing everything at Josh Oliver. So I said, that's good. He said it's too early to get into the, the whole guard competition since they're not even in pads yet. So he said they put on the pads next week. Uh, so we will be looking forward to that because that will mean that the, the, the practice will be getting a lot more physical. Uh, and, and expect to hear about some fights. It, it happens every year. It happens all the time. Um, it's not a big deal. I know I, I've seen somebody say I would be more concerned if the Ravens players were actually not fighting each other. Um, but anyway, not, not the Earl Thomas Chuck Clark kind of fight. Not those, but just some little skirmishes here and there. Uh, last but certainly not least was Keith Williams. Uh, they asked him about how you feel about the Ravens staff about since you've been here. And he said that everything about the staff has been great. Everything. Uh, he spoke highly of the team. Uh, they asked him about T. Martin and his relationship. Uh, said they have a great relationship and they used to battle in the recruiting streets. So they were all trying to get different players and stuff going back and forth. Uh, and he said the working relationship couldn't be better. So that was nice to hear, man. Uh, he said that he wants guys to be fanatics when he talked about him coaching them. He said he wants guys to be fanatics as technicians and be fanatics when it comes to details. So he wants them to go hard uh, in practice and all that uh, in repetitions. Uh, so when it comes to being on the field, then it, it makes it a lot easier of a process. So that was nice to hear. Now, for the young guys, this is something that I really like, too. Um, he said for the young guys that he doesn't want them to look too far ahead. Um, and for them, he doesn't want them to have, like, specific goals for stats and numbers and touchdowns. And he doesn't want them to have that. Um, and he said don't look at the calendar. He said do not look at social media. Uh, he said don't go by what your friends think you're going to do. He said don't go by any of that. And what he said to do is to practice hard, play hard, and soak up lessons from the veteran players. And he said just to get better every day. So I, I, I really appreciated that part. And, and I think that could be advice for anybody. Because if you get so caught up in certain numbers like, oh, if I don't reach this certain goal by then, then, oh, I'm a failure. That's how a lot of people, that, that's what a lot of people do. That's what a lot of people do with themselves. That's what social media does for a lot of people. Social media has just... It's a gift and a curse It is a gift and a curse all at the same time Because so many people compare themselves to other people And when you get caught up in comparing yourself to somebody else You're not the same as them You're not You're not going to do everything like they do You shouldn't do everything like they do You're not the same You are your own person Social media has just destroyed people, man Destroyed their, their mentals Because they get so caught up in it they're like, oh, man, I got to do that since that person's doing that. Oh, I got to do this since this person's doing that. Oh, I got to get these numbers since that person's doing these numbers. No, do your own thing, man. Do your own thing. So I, I, I love that advice because it's not just for football. I love advice that, yeah, you could apply it to football, but you could also apply it just to life in general. Um, anyway, he said uh, that he always looks for ways uh, to improve because they were asking him about his coaching style and whatnot. They asked him about the whole soccer ball thing. And they said with the soccer ball, 
uh, that he looks for players' uh, catching approach. He looks for their hand placement and their dexterity in their arms and their fingers. So, again, that attention to detail. Uh, and he said he was surprised because uh, they asked him about John Harbaugh. They said, were you looking for this job? Or were you expecting this job or whatever? Did you expect to hear from Harbaugh? He said he was surprised to hear from John Harbaugh. So he was a little bit shocked. He said he, he said that they knew mutual people, uh, and John Harbaugh contacted him, and he said he wasn't necessarily looking for this opportunity, but he said that this opportunity ended up being a blessing. And that that those be some of the biggest, most best opportunities when you're not even looking for it, and it just happens, and you're like, wow, man, for real, man. We we've all done been been through that. Um, he also talked about how uh, everyone. Can take steps forward Even if you're a vet And he was speaking specifically About Sammy Watkins with that Because they asked him about His previous relationship with Sammy Watkins Since he had coached him before uh, But he said hey He could still keep getting better So we never finished improving And again that's life that can transfer That's advice that can transfer to life too So I appreciated that a lot um, and then toward the end, he talked. He was asked about Miles Boykin, like what's going on with Miles Boykin? How's he looking? How is he? And I love this because he said that uh, Miles Boykin is big and athletic, which we all know. Uh, but he said he just has to grow mentally, and I know that that's the same thing that I know I've said that a lot, and a lot of people have said that as well because it's true. We feel like Miles Boykin, he got all the tools in the world. Uh, he just got to put it together up here. Uh, once he put it together up here, whoo, <laughs> that could be a wrap. And also with the opportunity too. Um, and he said that uh, he just has to grow mentally and he, and he, This is my favorite part about what he said about Boykin He said that guys don't stay the same He said that last year is last year Because a, a lot of times we as fans We can be like, alright, well this is, how that play, that, this is how this player was last season So uh, that's probably how he's going to be this season too And that's it's not necessarily anything wrong with that because we as fans, when we look at stuff, um, we can look for consistency. What, what does this player consistently do? What does this player consistently not do? We just look for those, that consistency. Um, so with Miles Boykin, I did appreciate how he talked about how, you know, he doesn't have to be the same as he was last year. This is a new year. It's a new season, new year. So Miles Boykin could be something completely different now. And that's what we're hoping that Miles Boykin takes that jump forward. Uh, but anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, y'all keep your heads up. And again, don't don't compare yourself to other people. Don't get caught up with social media with seeing this person do that and that and that and that and be oh man, I'm not doing that. So oh man, I, I suck. No, that's not that's not the case. That's not the truth. Please don't get caught up in that because it's it's not worth it, man. It's it's not worth it. Y'all stay up. Y'all stay positive. Uh, be good to each other. Just tell somebody you love them today, please. And tell tell yourself that you love yourself. Not in no cocky or arrogant way, but. You need to make sure that you love yourself, man. For real. And I know that there's that corny saying, oh, you got to love yourself before you love somebody else. That's true. You do. You really do. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we are out. <laughs>